Thank you for tuning in to Faith in Jesus Ministries. My name is Mike Barclay, the Preacher Man. I'm going to be preaching today, Will Our World End and How Will It End? Luke 21, beginning at verse 7. Master, but when shall these things be? Sign will there be when these things come to pass. Take heed that you be not deceived. Many shall come in my name, saying, Lord, Lord, and I am Christ, and the time draweth near. Be not after them. When you should hear wars and rumors of wars and commotions, be not terrified. Things must first come to pass. It is not by and by. He said among them, nations shall rise against nation against king. Earthquakes shall be in diverse places. Demons and pestilence and disease. Powerful signs and great signs shall there be from heaven. For all these things they shall lay their hands on you and persecute you. Put you into prison. Bring you before kings and rulers for my name's sake. The disciples had come and asked Jesus, when is the end of the world? The sign of your coming. And again, they totally believed Jesus Christ was going to come again. End of the age. The end of the earth. Not the end of the world we think of. world system who's dominated by evil. The strange little verse. One of the shortest verses in the Bible. Luke 17, 32. The verse 20. Because also as it was in the days of Lot. They eat, they drank, they bought, they sold. They married, and they builded. But the same day Lot went out of Sodom, and fire and brimstone from heaven destroyed them all. Thus shall be in the day as the Son of Man is revealed. Today he that shall be on the housetop, stuck in the house, let him not da come down to take it away. He that is in the field, let him likewise not return back. Remember Lot's wife. That's my text. Why would Jesus say a thing like that? Strange thing for him to say. Remember Lot's wife. I heard the story about two little boys were pushing automobile tires down the road. Out of Sunday school with that lesson would been on that path said, Hey boy, that's really some wife looking back and turned into a pillar of salt. The other boy said, That's nothing about my mom. My mom spent driving my dad's car and looked back and ran into a lamppost. Articles and many books are coming out in the past few years. Armageddon. In the word Armageddon. You see it almost every week in your newspapers. So people are using that word. Just last week they said, is Armageddon near? Armageddon is a symbol of the last war in history. Douglas MacArthur was in command in the Pacific Fleet. Mankind has had its last chance. The battle of Armageddon comes next. That 40 years ago said, and except those days shall be short, no flesh be saved. He said, in the end time I will pour my spirit out on all men. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man gets to the Father but through me. But he that knocketh at the door, I will come in and make a home with him. Peter, the third chapter. The Lord will come as a thief in the night. The heavens will pass away. Great noise and the elements will burn and melt with fervent heat. Also in the works that are there, burned up. Brother Mike, do you think those things are going to take place? Back and study why Jesus said, remember Lot's wife. With Abraham. Abraham was called by God. He was a friend of God. He was a great man, a God. great man of faith. He told him to take his only son Isaac and take him to the mountain Moriah and sacrifice him. He did it. And offer him as a sacrifice, but God stopped his hand in midair. was testing him to see how much he really loved God. Maybe that's what your trials and tribulations are about. God is testing you to see if you're worthy and pure as gold. How much you obey God. Toured all around the Middle East. Toured down by the rock Iranian war is. Being Heron with his father Terah. There to Canaan and then to Egypt. Bethel and then to Africa and back to Bethel and back and forth to the Middle East and it became very rich. Lar large herds of cattle and sheep and he had his nephew Lot with wife's name was saved. The danger of riches and influency and fame and fortune. Fluency often brings spiritual poverty. Abraham committed some sins before the Lord. In the mount, he confessed and was redeemed. God forgave him to forgive you today for your sins. It says in Ecclesiastic 6, the man of honor and wanted nothing for his son said it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than a rich man to get into heaven. For the rich people, Jesus said very clearly it's going to be hard for a rich man to get into heaven because all the allurements of the world, all the dangers it brings. Also became rich. Abraham was rich and Lot was rich. They decided they would separate. Lot, if you want to go to the left, I'll go to the right. If you want to go to the right, I'll go to the left. Look down and seen the well-watered plains of the Jordan. He saw Sodom and his wife was urging him to go to Sodom, a wicked city. Take all that from Vegas, from California, from Amsterdam, and put all that together and not even come close to what Sodom was like. Oh, this was the iniquity of Sodom. It was all having anal sex with each other and stuff. I had like LGBTQ. Uh, 
He was very proud. A lot of gay pride there in Sodom, I'm just saying. Excluded God, they were proud of themselves they had done. Filled with bread, an abundance of idleness was in their daughter. Because they had all the things they needed a life of leisure. Did they strengthen the hand of the poor and needy? They didn't give any to any money to all the homeless. Nor the needy and the poor. The rest of the world. Sometimes we ignore those of other races. Or those people in Africa that are suffering for famine. Or those people in India that are suffering from famine. We don't ignore them, but we don't do much about it. As much as we could do like if they had a war or something it's gonna hold us responsible They're hoardy and they committed abominations before me in other words they were proud hoardy rich they had it all like gay pride neglected the poor and the oppressed said judgment is gonna come luke the 17th chapter was in the days of they a lot they ate they drank they gave into marriage and parties and drinking they sold they planted they built same day lot went out of sight fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all even thus in the day that the son of man was revealed it was in the days of noah as it was in the days of sodom similar in the days of the coming of of Jesus Christ in the day of the Christ comes. It says in over 300 verses, Jesus Christ is going to come again. I go to make a place for you. There are many mansions in heaven. Hope that beats in the heart of every true believer. He was raised from the dead. He is alive. He's at the right hand of God. He's coming back. The disciples don't try to guess the day or the hour. Speculate. We don't know. Even Jesus doesn't know the time. He left us certain signs. Signs are coming together of the first time this history. It's history. The signs seem to be there that the coming of the Lord is near. No, we're not sure. It seems that way. Things he said the Middle East would be in turmoil. All the pestilence, all the bugs and grasshoppers that go crazy and eat everything. Terrorism that's going on in the world in the Middle East. And tremendous military buildups around the world. These things are indications that the coming of the Lord is near. The will destroy itself. doesn't intervene. MacArthur said Armageddon is next. Right, it could be next. Different kind of war. It's going to be a nuclear war. It's going to be a war of total destruction if it's ever fought. It's going to intervene. Personally, I don't think we're going to have an atomic war. Anybody, unless he's some crazy man, and there are some crazy people, I think came deep been possessed had an atomic bomb he would have thrown nuclear chain reaction could take place if uh, russia shoots their missiles and u.s shoots their missiles and israel shoots their missiles I believe the bible teaches that god has other plans for the human race so mike thinks christ is coming again and the kingdom of god is going to triumph because he's the king of kings and lord of lords does the, know christ and have the kingdom of god in us a reign with christ Looking forward to that day he said two will lay in the bed one taken and one will be left be flying in the airplane one taken and one left to armageddon is similar to the destruction of sodom jesus said well, sodom had a false security we have a false security too we trust in our economic strength and our military power i could go with just a month day of the 30 first chapter of them that go to a pagan country for help in horses and trust in chair not unto god neither seek the lord looking to god in the usa they're all about their beer and sex and pornography and drugs and alcoholism seeking the lord seeking why he can be found in these other things and in our dollars and in our pound and our military power things will not save us need god you on youtube and facebook and the internet right now you need god you need jesus power seek the lord why he can be found second thing they were involved in sinful pleasure become satiated we too are that brutal sadistic pleasure someone in hollywood said we're going to have more action beyond but under the covers and we're going to have more violence too kicks you have to give them, them kicks it's very much like the roman gladiators in the coliseum in rome more brutal and more violent for the people satisfy the people warns the triumph of the wicked is short boy of a hypocrite but for a moment only a moment in time says in proverbs 14 there is a way of right into a man thereof is the way of death it seems right to go this way but in the end is death god said after the heart is sorrow heart is heaviness it's heavy aren't you sad sometimes pick up the paper and you watch the news and you see all the murders and rapes and killings that's going on i can just not understand what's going on with the world and evil people and the bible says the people of Sodom were too busy for God. Are you too busy for God? Busy making a living and enjoying their pleasures so they didn't have time for God the way we are. God first place in our life does demand first place in our life. Be the law that sits on the throne of your life, controls your life, and rules your life.
why he sent his son Jesus Christ to die on the cross shed his blood so our sins can be forgiven them today is a is one word called sin it says we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God born in sin we're all sinners we're sinners by choice that sin separates you between you and God you have a sense of fulfillment you don't know the purpose and the meaning of your life these kicks and all these drugs and alcohol and all these pleasures and not be satisfied and deep down inside you is crying for something more solve the problems of your heart solve the problem of your unemployment out of kilt or something's very wrong the man that Jesus taught about he was a rich man in my soul i have much goods laid up for many years i ease a drink and be mad tired and was gonna go to bermuda or south of france and live in the sun he made a decision he talked to his soul you see your soul lives in your body soul is a real you oh you laid up all these goods you got all this money coming in social security got everything then he grabbed his chest one night and said oh and then an angel said die fool thy soul is coming with me the night he died he didn't have one hour to rest he didn't get to enjoy his wealth could he put his confidence in the wrong place Many of us on youtube and facebook and the internet are here tonight very much like that guilty of idolatry sin that god hates the most and that's the, what the western world is doing today it's 125 says Change the truth of God for a lie. Worship, serve creative things and not like the creator. They were making gods and if you go back in those days, they were largely animals. They felt like animals within, animals that were in them, they made gods of. Romans 10, 8 says, idolaters will have their way in the fire and brimstone lake of fire called the second what the bible says it ain't mike barclay the preacher man saying that Bible says thing in your life that takes the place of god becomes your god the next thing they were guilty of was sex perversion man on man woman on woman stuff last directions a nation takes before judge this we found in affluent society normal sex relations like jeffrey's little island or beyonce and jay-z Versions of various sorts. Find new ways to get kicks out of sex. Full-time occupation of many people. You go to the newsstand, magazine after magazine, dedicated to that. New angle, some new way. So all this place, Sodom lived in Lot. Lot had chose Sodom to make his home. Lot had one foot in the kingdom of God and one foot in the kingdom of the world. Lot between happy in the sinful world and he wasn't happy in the kingdom of God. You are like that on Facebook, YouTube, and the internet. You go to church, you have faith in God, and pray and sing. While you read the Bible, inside your heart, you know your heart belongs to the world. Jesus says you're like whitewashed tombs. You're clean on the outside and dirty on the inside. This cosmos system is dominated by you have a Christian hair. Parents were Christians. You learn from the Bible and scow a man or woman of the world. Never really satisfied. It's wrong. Something's lacking. Something's missing. Do you know what it is? You haven't been born. You really haven't received Christ totally and completely. So lulled and safe. But tonight is yo night. You and you and you. Make that commitment. Do it tonight. They said God was dead. Or got many of his ideas. father was a clergyman and ended up in an insane asylum. Many of those people... Uh, from the Nazis went berserk as they got older. I had to denounce God against God. Gods of God's judgment were gathering over Sodom that day. Some of their Armageddon was drawing near. In addition to be a God of love and mercy who gave his son for us, who loves us is a God of wrath. Who is angry with the wicked every day. Those that are away from the wicked lives. In Romans 1 8, the God is against all unheavenliness and unrighteousness. The truth of in unrighteousness. Hold the truth, but you don't live with your mouth, Jesus. The heart is far from me. Many of you live that kind of life revelation the sixth chapter said the mountains and rocks in the day of judgment fall on us hide us from him that sitteth on the thrath the arge of the land great day of his wrath is able to stand the bible teaches that god's wrath will be poured out onto the world people no longer believe that a lot of churches don't preach it and teach it no more in the bible the mike believes it. i believe it because jesus taught me let's talk more about it than anybody else interesting to me the people that are talking about Armageddon is a scientist, theologist, historian, this is our universe warning us. But we don't listen to the ones that have the hope beyond the judgment. Have hope in Christ. Something to offer people. A new day to praise the Lord. Don't shout me down when I'm preaching good. A new day. A new world is going to be born. A new heaven and a new earth going to be part of us. We're in his kingdom. Jeremiah wept over Jerusalem. All judgment was coming. It's called the weeping prophet. Wept over Jerusalem 700 years later. God warned Sodom. Two messengers to warn his wife didn't believe. And she looked back and was turned into a pillar of salt. He did. The angel said, don't look back. But she dis didn't believe. Turned into a pillar. His wrath was poured out on Sodom. And Abraham knew it was coming. If you found 50 righteous people in Sodom, would you save it? God said, yeah. Five, 30, 
20. And you can find 10 righteous people totally committed to God was not in Sodom. Judgment came and fire and brimstone came. It's a lesson we learned from that statement. Remember Lot's wife. Jesus said, lived in Abraham's tent and she had seen the power of God. Just given much as recorded. Brought up with Christianity all around. Bibles every is on every corner and be held far more responsible. Judgment there's people in China or India or someplace they never heard it. Remember what a raw marriage with the Canaanite and God had forbid that you marry one of the Canaanites. Men and women have been destroyed by marrying the wrong person that would influence you along the way. The reason you should marry God's to remember her sin, but it's such a small sin. presented unbelief over many years. His mercy was giving her another chance and said, don't look back. Back to Sodom. Sodom is controlled by the devil. It. Her heart was still in her sin. Didn't seem to be that great. Just to look back. Indeed inside of her to cause her to look back. Remember, fourthly, she was almost saved. They were at the gate. Gate of Zor, the city of refuge. The place that the criminals in, were in, that if they committed a crime or murder or rape or something, that's a place of sanctuary that they could get a lawyer and straighten their business. Will lynch you or, or hang you in the drop of the hat in those were cities of refuge. They could go and find safety. Right on the edge of Zor when she turned and looked back. At that moment, she turned into a pillar of salt. The great king heard Paul preach and he almost was persuaded, but he hardened his heart. Many of you on YouTube and Facebook and the internet are almost persuaded to follow Jesus and take Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Life to Christ, but you're going to take a chance and make it without. Fifthly, remember she was offered salvation by Christ. This is a place of salvation and refuge where God poured out his love on that cross and our sins were no more. It was made to be sin for us so I could get into hell. He took my sins and your sins. He took the judgment, the hell that I deserve. He crawled. said, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? He didn't forsake his son. He forsake the sin that he became. Holy, holy, holy is the God of hosts. To you, he took the hell that we deserve. For salvation should have been saved. They were trying to do, get her to a place of safety. Sixthly, God never judges without warning. Flood in Houston, Texas that killed hundreds of people. A hurricane up and down the beach telling everybody there's going to be a hurricane and nobody was paying any attention. Break at any moment. Supposed to evacuate, but they were partying on the beach. People wouldn't evacuate. They were having a hurricane party. Hurricane hit and scores of people lost their lives. God warned them. The man warned them. One day you'll see this picture when you stand at the judgment of God. You'll know that you were warned. You didn't accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Remember when God warns there's danger and delay. It just says prepare to meet thy God. Put it off. Harden his heart will suddenly be approved and cut off. Not remedy. To Christ while you can. Seek him while he can be found. He says I am the truth and the life. No man comes to the Father but through me. Now is the accepted time. Today is the day of salvation. I ask you to flee to the place of safety. The only safe place in this world is the cross of Christ. In the shadow of the Almighty in the open tomb. He has risen. Jesus, please remember Brother Mike when you get to paradise. Please remember me. If you'd like to know Jesus, just say this simple little prayer with me. Say, Jesus, I repent of my sins. Come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. If you said that with me right now, We'd like to believe you got saved. Get into a, a good Bible preaching church. Put God first place and you'll take your place you can't imagine. Stay tuned for the blessing. May the Lord bless you and show his kindness, his love, and his mercy. May he open the windows of heaven and pour blessings upon you. You have no room to receive. In Jesus' holy name. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Don't shout me down when I'm preaching good. Amen. Hallelujah. Be sure to share and like my videos. I sure love y'all guys. Thank you. Until the Lord comes back, and I'll see you again. And if unless the Lord comes back quick, amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God.